welcome. I'm Mary Davidson and it's our community. Today we have a very special, well we have two guests, one human with two legs and one with almost human with four legs. <laughs> and it is Gary Lezak and Sonny. And Sonny is the new addition and the reason, <coughs> yes, I think so too. Sonny's trying to talk to us, I do believe. <laughs> but Gary has written, besides all of his other attributes, which I can tell you in just a minute, he has written a really nice book that would make a lovely gift for your children or grandchildren. And um, I bought a copy, so I, I feel very comfortable in recommending it to you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's called, It's a Sunny Day. And as you well know, Gary has been, we don't have to tell how many years, if you don't want to, but it's been a long time that Gary has been the weatherman on KSHB TV Channel 41 Action News. Yes. And he, during that time, has accumulated a lot of accolades for his wisdom in weather, his weather wisdom, how's that? That sounds good. Yes, and it's just a wonderful thing. He, um, you've won some awards um, in meteorology and for the, and for your, I don't know, you're just a good weather predictor. It's just very nice. And anyway, he is welcome and I want you to be able to talk to him. His family, they're all girls. <laughs> 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 and they decided to get a new puppy. So here they are. They're going, they adopted Sonny. I love the illustrations. Do you, was the illustrator a friend of yours? No, Rob, Rob Peters is the illustrator and he's a freelance illustrator. He lives in Topeka, Kansas. Uh -huh. And my publisher, uh, Bob Snodgrass with Ascend Books, said, Gary, I've got this illustrator and I think he's a fit for this story. And so I ended up sending him hundreds, if not thousands, probably hundreds uh -huh. of pictures of windy, stormy, freezy, and sunny, and uh, all the dogs. And so, so he got all the pictures. We wrote the children's story. I wrote the children's story uh, with the help of my friend Andy Carraway and with some inspiration of all of my career efforts. And we wrote this beautiful children's story and then Rob Peters took our story and illustrated it and, and uh, he captured it, didn't he? He did, he did. But on the other hand, you didn't win six Emmys for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but I love it because uh, no sooner had they gotten Sunny than they went, I don't want to tell you too much because it's a really cute story, but they went on a trip. Yeah, an went adventure. To an, an adventure, that's right. They went to Colorado. And, and see all the dogs running around? And it they're smelling the smells, Mary. They're smelling the smells, seeing the sights, hearing the sounds, and then, of course, me being a meteorologist and having a weather element, a thunderstorm begins building, yes. and it builds up and grows, and on the next page, there's lightning, boom, flash, thunder, and Sunny, just adopted, gets scared and afraid. As you can see, she slips her collar on the left. There's breezy, stormy, and windy watching, and Sunny thinks we're following her, and she's running up high in the mountain, all this lightning. She's scared, and then she ends up in a cave on the next page. You can show the next page. Okay. And she ends up in a cave, and it's pouring down rain. No, the right before that. Right before Turn that. two pages yeah. at once. And she ends up in this cave and she's crying. Well, she, I would be too, I have to tell you. She's all alone. The rain is changing to snow. And she, as it says there, Sunny turned to look for Gary and her sisters to make sure they made it inside as well, but they were nowhere to be found. She was lost. Where is my new family? She cried, and she's in the cave, but that's where the twist to the story begins. And there's another dog in the cave. We don't want to give away too no, much. No, we don't. We don't want to And it's it. changing to snow, but you can see the snow. And Jamie is saying, I've been on adventures like this before. I know what to do. Go make paw prints in the snow, and your family is sure to find you. And Sunny is running around. She makes paw prints in the snow. And then the adventure goes from there. 
And then down below, breezy, stormy, windy, and Gary have to go and find Sonny. And it's an adventure up into the Rocky Mountains. And then after the story's over, we've got this beautiful section on storms and clouds, my favorite things in meteorology. And we're going to talk about that just one moment. But I want to know, for, and, and by the way, you can see that Sonny made it because she's here. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I want to talk about that. At what point in your life did you decide that you wanted to be a meteorologist? I've always wanted to be a meteorologist since I was five years old. Really? I mean, my first memories are of clouds. I grew up in Los Angeles. Uh -huh. uh, where you would think the weather was boring, but being a little kid there, I didn't know that. I thought it was the most exciting place in the world for weather, and it really is, when you get away from there, one of the more boring places in some respects. But I grew up out in Southern California, and then I went through high school, always interested in weather, got accepted to the University of Oklahoma, and I got my degree in meteorology in 1985, and, you know, even though I... I think I had a dream of being on TV someday. It wasn't really one of my things that I thought. You probably would, didn't think about it. I didn't think I was going to do it because I wasn't outgoing. I was pretty shy in some respects. In public speaking, I was petrified. But then my senior year at the University of Oklahoma, uh, I got a, a, a big break, got an internship, got started in my career, and now it's 31 years later. And, and then you say... What happened? Yeah, I know. That's what I'm at. I'm at that how point in my you, life how now. How did you get to the TV business? Well, um, I was, um, you know, I, in my senior year at Oklahoma, there was a student there that there was a, uh, a, 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 a Norman Cable TV in Norman, Oklahoma. Uh -huh. They had a program. And the kids in the class had a practice newscast. And so one of the more outgoing students convinced the journalism teacher to allow us to go in as meteorology students to practice doing the weather. And I went in there and I started doing it and that was the beginning of all of my breaks in, this, my, in my career. It's really, and of course, you know, I remember when I was little, we had more snow and it was deeper. It was colder in the winter time right. than it is now. And I think we're doing something terrible to the atmosphere somewhere because the weather is changing. Of course, I do know it runs in cycles, does it not? Right. Well, speaking of cycles, I've got a whole theory about cycles. The oh. weather, the oh. weather, the weather pattern is cycling, and this winter, once the pattern sets up, we know what the weather pattern is going to look like, so we can actually forecast the weather 50, 100 days into the future. I've got an entrepreneurial effort that I started called Weather 2020. And you can go see well, that weather 20. I don't have a crystal ball, but yeah. if I pretend, can yeah. you tell me what the crystal yeah, ball says? Yeah, I can tell you, but not yet. You know, as soon as we get to the winter, I'm going to know what this weather pattern is. It's fascinating. But to your point, there are changes in the weather, whether it's global warming or climate change, and your assessment that there's less snow now than there was. you got to just look at the last six years, Mary, because we had the lowest amount of snow we've ever had, 3.9 inches four years ago, 5.9 inches of snow last year, so two of the lowest snow years ever, but there was also a winter with 44 inches, a winter of 36 inches just in the last six years. There's signs that the earth is warming up. How is it caused? It, the earth is warming up. Let's just say that. That's a fact. But it, what causes it is a whole other story. But that's not in my children's book. No, no, but I think, you know, I, I was telling Gary that many years ago when I first taught school, I had sixth grade, and weather was one of the subjects that we covered. So we had a weather station, and we used the, the um, uh, PA system in the school to report the weather, um, just like he does. And we could do pretty well uh, 48 hours in advance. We really could. And the secret to our success, I will tell you, was the barometer. And um, you talk about um, humidity and you talk about air pressure, but the air pressure is a good indicator of what's coming. When the pressure is falling, then you know that there's a low pressure area moving towards you, indicating that there likely is a storm approaching. When the pressure is rising, then there's high pressure moving towards you and usually it clears out. That's one of the things, but the most important thing that kids should learn about in meteorology, clouds. 
Okay. Oh my. Clouds are the first thing, the basics of meteorology. Growing up in California, since we didn't have storms, I became obsessed with clouds. So there's a whole cloud section in here with a cloud chart that can begin to teach kids on how to forecast the weather. Yes, you have to know if the pressure is falling, if the pressure is rising, but if the pressure is falling and cirrus clouds are increasing across and your we're sky. Gonna, you see, it's a good thing you talked about yeah. clouds. You, you let me segue right into cloud pictures. Okay. So we have a lot of cloud pictures and we're gonna show them to you and then Gary can kinda talk about them. Sure. So let's go. And this is a, a variety of cirrus clouds, cirrocumulus clouds, way up high, made up of ice crystals. It's a rare cloud, but when you see this cloud type and the pressure is falling and the wind is turning to the south or southeast, then a storm may be two days away. You can actually look at this cloud to know if a storm is about two days away. So, and so that's that's the one of the higher okay, cloud types. And, but we got lots of different kinds. Yeah. So the next kind. This is more, it looks to me like a stratus cloud. The first cloud was the high cloud type. This is a low cloud type. And when you don't see any features and you can see the sun shining through them, perhaps it's a stratus variety and the sun is shining through them and this would be a low cloud or stratus cloud. It but looks it might like. be sprinkles there. It's hard to say. It looks like we have high clouds and low clouds. Uh -huh. You know, it's a stratus variety and I have to analyze this more. Now that I look at it closely, it is a stratus, but it's more of an alto stratus or cirro stratus. It looks like it isn't the low cloud. It's actually higher up. Going to rain? Um, that would be indicated an in indication of fair weather. Here is a cirrus or cirrocumulus cloud again. Beautiful cloud picture there. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, I love it. And then you got some more cirro stratus. And, and tell me what the weather tells you when you look. Well, if the pressure is falling again and yeah. the winds are turning to the south, this cloud would mean that you have a chance of a storm within two days. This is the kind of cloud that can give you, a farmer would tell you, they know what's coming two days away. If it's during the summer, it might be a thunderstorm over western Kansas and it's never going to get to you. So it's interesting to well, see. Well, you can see it roll in from the west. Yeah. I love these clouds. Are these pressure? In my book, once again, we have the whole cloud section that teaches well, you see, about the 10 right. cloud types. Here's another cirrus cloud. Is that a happy, sunny day? Yeah. This is just a fair weather cirrus cloud. Uh -huh. And this likely is from a storm that is over the Pacific Ocean and it's all that's left of it. And so that would likely mean nothing is heading your way. And so go out and enjoy the day. Exactly. Sunny, do you agree? Sunny, you agree? Sunny has a lot to say. Yeah, don't you agree? Now, yeah. Uh, oh, Sunny. Sunny does have a lot to say. Yeah, we're going to have her do a trick here in a minute. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. And then this is a cumulonimbus cloud. And those are the pictures that we see it. You, know, you look at them and you think it looks like something. It's a thunderhead. Mm -hmm. And that's a thunderstorm. And this is probably about 25, 30 miles away, 40 miles away. And you can see the cumulus clouds building up. But what's amazing about these clouds, a cloud weighs about 1 million pounds. The, the, the smallest cumulus cloud. This one probably weighs 100, 200, 1,000 times that, billions of pounds. It's got so much rain and hail inside of that cloud. It's incredible that it floats and doesn't fall on us. Isn't that a good thing? It's a very good thing. <laughs> well, you know, and this reminds, well, there's another one. That's that's us. Yeah, on the right, you can see a rain shaft. That's getting close. And uh, the nimbo, nimbo, human nimbus cloud trying to form there. Looks yeah. like over the water. But, you know, it reminds me of the water cycle. Yeah. And, and, you know, um, the evaporation forming the clouds. It rains and it just keeps going around. Yeah. So we... When we say that the, the Ogallala Aquifer is drying up, there's only so much water there. I mean, it isn't going to be replaced. Well, unless think, it rains a lot. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I guess I shouldn't expect that. So. But, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it just keeps going around. There's a word in here that I don't, I'm not familiar with. Graupel? Graupel. That's the kind of soft hail that when you go to the Rocky Mountains, especially during the summer months, it'll be raining instead of hail. You have these little snow pellets. Not quite snow, not quite hail, not quite sleet. But they're little? They're, they're little, mm -hmm. and uh, they, it, that's what graupel is. Yeah, I don't, maybe I've seen it and just didn't know what it was. Yeah, I'll describe it to you this winter, because Kansas City often gets it a couple times during the winter. Mm -hmm. So we'll let you know in 41 Talk about minutes. lightning just a little bit. Yeah. When, you know, the, 
charge and discharge of, of electric. Yeah, current. lightning is an amazing result of the charge separation inside the clouds. When ice forms in the clouds, it creates this separation and you can have a discharge. And I talk about it in the book. For the kids, for the kids, there's this great game I like to play. When you see lightning, it's it's basically the speed of light. You see lightning and light travels at about 186,000 miles per second. So if it's 186,000 miles away from us, which is ridiculously far, you would see light in a second. But sound travels much slower. So I tell the kids, if you see lightning, start counting. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five. And then you hear thunder at five seconds. Sound travels five seconds per mile. So then you know it's one mile away. The next time you see lightning, it fits 15 seconds, then it's three miles away. So you can tell the kids to not be afraid of thunderstorms, play this game, look outside, see if a thunderstorm's moving closer to them or farther away from them. It's a game I play every single time now. Even so, yet? I play now. <laughs> I do. I want to know if that thunderstorm is moving closer to me. So I played that game with the kids. Tornadoes scare me a little yeah. bit. I remember uh, I was working downtown um, on the 7th or 8th floor of the school board building downtown, and I saw that tornado come down when it destroyed Catherine Carpenter's school. Wow. And it looked like, uh, and we can show you that finger of a tornado that's coming down, and um, it's that's scary. That's a pretty good tornado there. It's scary. Uh, I've only seen one tornado myself. I went tornado chasing with my brother, and it was an EF3 or about 180 mile per hour winds. It was about a mile or two away from me, and it was That's chasing me. <laughs> okay, and I was <laughs> I was so afraid. I was moving so fast down this road. My brother said, "Gary, you can stop. It's crossing the road." And I wish I would have stopped and gotten out and watched it, but. No, I was driving, and I kept driving and driving and driving. Oh, it's frightening. It's like a the hand, literally the finger of God coming down, yeah. and it is scary. I it, watched that tornado it's a, come yeah, down. Tornadoes are bad. They're the oh, worst man. and strongest storm on earth. And also, we have trouble around here with flash floods. Yeah. And flash floods, I, I don't think people understand how dangerous a flash flood can be. Right. Flooding so. is very dangerous. In fact, in Kansas City, we have more... More people get killed in floods than do in tornadoes here around our area. Um, so uh, flooding is a danger we have each year, depending on uh, the rain that falls. But we have this rule, turn around, don't drown. If you come across a road and water's flowing across it, even if it's only one foot deep to two feet deep, it's all it takes to wash away. An SUV can be washed away if water's moving across the road. So. Just don't drive across the flooded road, mm. and flash flooding can kill. It's, well, it's bad. I live, um, there's a small creek in back of uh, Tomahawk. It flows into Tomahawk Creek. And when that water comes down there, it is moving. Yeah. And I think, boy, nobody could survive that. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah, water is so powerful. It is. It's so, uh, so every what, year. So what do you think of the Farmer's Almanac? <laughs> <laughs> a lot you're, of people swear. We're going to open up a can of worms here. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Um, remember, with my company, Weather 2020, uh -huh. we have what I would call the Smart Farmer's Almanac. Uh -huh. There's this app called One Weather, the One Weather app. Uh -huh. And if you download the One Weather app, there are 12 weeks of forecast on there. Uh -huh. And so they're made by us, real meteorologists. Mm -hmm. Our forecasts are based on the cycling pattern I told you about, uh -huh. and these forecasts are right. The brides can depend on, uh, you know, event planners, vacation planners. If you want to know what's going to happen in March, I can tell you in January and be right. The Farmer's Almanac, not. Well, they, they go a year in advance. Yeah, and, they're, and it's wrong. So they go a year in advance, but it's, it's wrong. <laughs> Some of them are right. Yes. There's well, some of them, but 25% accurate. Well, probability would say that you got to be right once in a while. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they do less than a coin flip. Can Wendy do, or Sunny do tricks? Sunny, I get all windy, breezy, stormy, and sunny. I know, it's okay. We got sunny, windy, breezy, and stormy. Breezy, stormy, windy are all in this book. And the interesting twist in there, the dog Jamie that's in there, that uh -huh. twist, uh -huh. was actually my first dog from 30 years ago. Was it really? Yeah. So Jamie the Sheltie. So Jamie makes So they are all remembered. Yeah. yeah. I, so, think, I think that's nice. Speak. I do. Mary wants to do a trick. Speak. Okay, good. Shake, shake. Good girl. Shake. Okay. Tornado. Good girl. Tornado. Wait, tornado. Good girl. Sit. Speak. <laughs> he says, shake. please. Other paw. Good girl. And dance. 
Okay. Up, dance, up, up, dance. The dance. Good girl. Ready? One more time. Dance, dance. Good girl. <laughs> Sit. And then her trick, I don't know if you can get a close up of this. Watch, watch on her nose. She's 80% on this. She's about as accurate as my forecast. Here we go. Here we go. Say, ready? Concentrate. Concentrate. You ready? Wait. Here we go. Concentrate. And get it. Oh, just missed it. One more time. So now you're going to get 50% today. Here you go, right? Concentrate. Concentrate. And get it. Got it. Oh. That's pretty good. Now, how did you teach her to do that? I don't know. I didn't think I was going to be able to. But she, Wendy used to flip it in the air and she'd catch it. She just lets it roll into her mouth. I don't well, know Well, it's easier that way, I think. She's very smart. <laughs> so what, what's next for the, the meteorologist of the century here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Mary. That's, I do. I, you know, I always, even if I don't listen to the news on KSHB, I listen to, I listen to it because I listen to see what you're going to say about the weather. Well, thank you very much. I do. You know, well, my company, Weather 2020, KSHB 41 Action News. And they've been good to you. Yeah, they've been great. I've been chief meteorologist for um, 17 years. Has it been that long? Yeah, 17 years now and 25 years here in Kansas City this next year. And, you know, maybe there's going to be the second book. It's a Sunny Life. It's available at area bookstores, Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble. You got yours, I right? got this one at Barnes & Noble. Right, you can go pick it up there. Mm -hmm. um, and But likely by late next year we're writing another story. Another children's story. Think about all the storylines that we have possible. Well, you know, and that's true. But I honestly, I don't know that anybody is. I think this is sort of a unique subject because, right. I mean, the whole world is open to you. And this is for little guys. Yeah. And they can, I, I imagine a second, third grader could read this book himself or herself. And I see, to me, that's so nice because then they're more interested in what's, I mean, you get them all ready. It's right. like giving them a piece of candy and then teaching them what you want them to exactly. learn. Exactly. And in my in the back section here, one thing real quick. Okay. We have this thing, it's called Sunny's Weather Academy. After the beautiful children's story comes to a conclusion, here it is, and the kids can become my junior meteorologist. And so, there's Sunny's Weather Academy, the beginning of the educational series about clouds, precipitation, and storms in the back. Here it is. Isn't that neat? Uh-huh. So, Wait, now I got and then it. The, the, I there's, got it now. That's, the, that's based on the 41 Action News Studio. Isn't that pretty? Well, that's right. There it is. is. That's our, that's our weather is. pod. And I don't know if I've had four dogs in there, but there they are. There they are. Isn't that great? So now, Rob, one of them is not living. Is that correct? Yeah, Wendy, Wendy and Stormy. Away. Stormy. Um, Wendy was on Oprah and Animal Planet. She was real super famous. Sunny's like, well, I don't know where she well, went. Well, she's to young. Now. She's only, yeah, Sunny. she's looking around. She's looking around. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think meteorology is, uh, are there more people that are interested, do you think, today um, as a career? I think as a career, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. As a career... Television is going through a, a change in the next 20, 30 years. You know, uh, about 15 years ago, you know, my peers thought, wonder what's going to happen in about 15 years to television. But it continues. The medium is strong. People still love getting their news on TV, but there's so many sources now. Well, a lot of people, I hate to say this, I really shouldn't, but they don't take the paper. They don't read the paper. They I know. get it on TV. I know. But nowadays, you know, for the weatherman, for the meteorologist, when you're in a place like Kansas City, Oklahoma City, where the weather is bad, the local weatherman, meteorologist, and my team of meteorologists is extremely important. We want people to trust us, to believe that we are accurate, which we are, and the most accurate for 20 years now. And we still are a very important source because when there's a chance of a tornado or something bad, a major snowstorm, the best place to get your information is from one-on-one -on -one with me on TV so I can tell you what's going to happen. So that likely continues for a long time into the future. So I'm not sure what is down the line. Well, so as long as you want to work, yeah. you'll have a, you'll have there's, a there's, there's a job there. And when you choose a team member, what are you looking for? Um, a team player, someone that's part of the team, that mm -hmm. wants to work together. And this is something I've learned over years, over years and years and years. And right now at 41 Extra News, we've got this great weather team. 
Sonny, what do you have? You're not supposed to eat that. Say, come here, come, come over here. No. <laughs> she's eating. She's eating paper. What are you doing? Come on. <laughs> come. Come over here. Come on. What do you have? She says, I found a piece of paper on the floor. <laughs> Look at that. Sonny, come on. But as far as, as uh, the technology yeah. of being a good meteorologist, right. how, how do you know that? Well, you, you, go, you know, going to a good school. University of Oklahoma. Is it? Is one of the best five is in it? the nation. Is that yeah. why you chose it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Penn, Penn State. Uh, Wisconsin, St. Louis University, Florida State. I mean, there's some very good schools. There's lots of other ones, too, where you can get your meteorology program. You learn. You learn how to be a team player. You learn how to tell the weather story. And that's what we look for. And that's what you... And really, it's a sunny life is the weather story. There you go. It is. And I... But I still want to know if we're going to have a cold winter. I'll let you know in about six weeks. Six weeks? <laughs> okay. Now, your 2020 company, is that a, a um, anybody can, Yeah. is it a, 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 a website? Pay? Yeah, go to weather2020.com. I have a blog that's $1.99 a month on there uh -huh. to share. But you don't have to do that. No. Uh -huh. You go to weather2020.com, and we have some special stuff coming out this year, special product for farmers and for energy customers for their zip code to know when it's going to turn cold, how cold it's going to get, really? how warm it's going to and get. You can, you're telling me now, wait just a minute. 200 days into the future. You can go it by, you can do it by zip code? Yeah, go down to your zip code. If there's a farmer in central Kansas, he can put it in his zip code, uh -huh. and we can get him the forecast for the next, oh, the next six months. Oh, gosh. Ten months. That's, then he knows when to bring in the wheat yeah. or cut the beans or do whatever. Yeah. And what's amazing, it'll be right. <laughs> well, I believe. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> but Gary said this himself, and as I thank Gary Lezak and Sonny, because she performed admirably for being here, he said, at the end of the book, he said, thanks for sharing our adventure. Hope you had fun. I had fun, Gary. Thank you very much. And thank you for coming. It's always so nice to see all of you, because it is our community. <laughs>